Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to practice and hear modes on the guitar. So modes are permutations of a scale, and in this case we're just going to do the modes of the major scale. So they're permutations, um, basically meaning that if you take the root of the scale and you call that one and all the other numbers are uh, labeled accordingly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Um, if you shift the number one over to something else and call that the main note, but keep all the relative distances, keep all the distances of the notes the same, otherwise the structure is the same, you just shifted kind of what you're thinking of as your main note. That's basically a mode. Now this video is kind of more for people that understand that and a, and a lot of people are understand that or they theoretically understand it or they, they um, even are using them um, but even someone already using it and understanding it I have a way of practicing it that I think really unlocks how to see it more clearly on the fretboard and and definitely hear the identity of each mode and the sound of it um, certainly people can disagree on you know how useful they are in improvisation or whatever but it is kind of fundamental theoretical knowledge so whether we want to use it over each chord when we're improvising or if we just want to make sure we know that information either way this kind of unlocks how to see them and hear them and I think it's super valuable so this exercise this method I call the root to root method or the root to root exercise sounds pretty simple we're gonna play the root uh, we're going to focus on the root of each mode, and of course that is what makes it the mode, is that it has a different root than the tonic root of the major scale. I mean, it's the same notes otherwise, it's just that you have to give focus to that other note as the root to get it to sound like uh, the mode that you want it to be. So, let me explain. Because guitarists, we, we often think of scales in positions, you know, this scale position or this scale form or this scale shape, um, it can be limiting, it can be hard to really feel and hear the roots of a mode. If we were doing it on the keyboard, on the piano, you could actually just say, oh, I'm going to play A to A in the C scale and get the natural minor scale or get the sixth mode of the major scale. That way you can actually just go you know, from you low note to high note and kind of just move that around. Um, less so on the guitar because we play in positions. It's also a little weird for actually seeing where the root is in a major scale because the root, in this case, it's the second to lowest note, but there's a note below it. But there's four other scale forms and the root is not the lowest note. We're not playing from the lowest note to the highest note. That's the root. So here's how we do it, even if it's just for a major scale. Here's how the exercise works. I'm gonna just do it on C major first. Okay, so it's the root to root method or the root to root exercise, whatever we're playing, root to root, but we're gonna do it in a specific way. You definitely start on the root. When you get to another root, you pause. You don't have to pause, but you have to play it twice. Okay, I like to pause a little bit there. So let's say you pause and then you play it again and keep going every time you get to a root. You have to play every note in the scale form, but you can't pause or repeat on any other notes. So the edge notes, like I think of this uh, you know, note down here, that's not a root, that's an edge note, it's the edge of the scale form. Edge note, if that's not a root, you gotta just bounce off it and come back, okay? So here's a root here, so you'd have to go, you'll see that in a second. So I'm gonna start on the root, and I'm gonna go, just, I'm just gonna start in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, pause, play it again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, pause, play it again, keep going, one, two, one. Why did I do that? Well, I ran out of space. That was the edge note. You can't pause on that last note and you can't repeat it. You have to only pause and repeat on roots. Now what's quite common, and this is, it's fine to practice these scale forms in any other way, but if we wanna see and hear and feel and understand the, the mode and where all the roots are and really internalize that, this is a great way to do it. So often we'll play these scale forms by playing lowest note, highest note, play that highest note again and come down. Totally great to play that for getting used to the scale form and scale position. Um, with practicing anything, it's so important to to know why you're doing something the, the way that you're doing it. Um, I, I can't really say that doing something like that or, or 
or what I'm talking about or something else is good or bad unless you're talking about a specific result that you want. So in our case, we're trying to hear and internalize the mode, so we have to do it in this particular way. This other way of playing it that I just demonstrated might be because you just want to really understand the physical shape of it or just be uh, working on your dexterity for that particular shape. So really is important, like I'm practicing it this way because I want it to I want the parameters to be this, the rules, so I can get this result from it. So in our case, the rules are very important. Well, with practicing anything, they are. But in our case, we really want to follow that. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Pause, repeat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Pause, repeat. Keep going as far as you can and come back. Had to pause again on one and repeat. sounds so major sounds like the major scale so much right finally uh if you just play this sounds like a major scale but that's a little bit of an interesting note to end on right so it sounds like major e but doesn't have that like home base feeling like we did when we did the root to root so that was it off of the tonic. So now we're gonna do the second mode, what's called Dorian mode. This is just treating this, what was the second note, the two note, as now one, as our main note. Same position though, okay? Quick side note actually. Um, what is, sometimes these scale forms are taught in a way where whatever the lowest note, they call it the mode. So you would say, oh, Dorian is, this is the scale form of Dorian. because that second note of the major scale is the lowest one. Well, it's not unless you're treating it as one. So really any of the scale forms out of those five scale form positions can be whatever mode if you're treating it that way, if you're hearing it that way, if the root is a certain note. It doesn't have to be the lowest note. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's just like you don't have to start on the root of a scale to play a melody in that scale. Um, it can still be the root though. So back to this, we did one, we're going to do it off two, we're going to do the Dorian mode, we're going to do the second mode. So we want to really do that same thing root to root. So we start on the root and we go up. That's the next root. It's going to force you to hear, really try to hear, when do I get to the root, right? One, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, one. Uh, I like to put those flats in there so I'm very specific. It's a bit more of a mouthful, of course, but I'm just going to do that for us anyway. One, repeating it. Two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, one. Oh, a root is the highest note this time, so we get to pause and repeat that. That's the sound of that mode. I love that end thing. If there's notes, if there are notes below, you gotta go below and come back, okay? So root, go up, root, pause, repeat, root, pause, repeat, continue on. Okay, so that is really the sound of it. Okay, if you did that over a D minor chord, it would, or D minor seven chord, D minor eleven chord, it would, it would really sound quite appropriate. This is like the mode that Miles Davis was playing in So What uh, in modal jazz music. It was all uh, based around that Dorian scale on D minor, and then it went up to E flat minor, and then went back to D minor. So uh, that's Dorian, second mode off D. Okay, here's the third mode. This is called Phrygian. And you don't even need to memorize these names of them. That's a separate thing. Of course, that's great. But uh, a lot of people will know the names and understand how it works and not necessarily be able to um, play it, focus on those notes, hear it, internalize it this way, kind of get, get to um, have it come out as a sound in an appropriate way on the guitar. So here we go. Um, one, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one. Okay, so I switched all those numbers around. Same physical shape though. Hmm, stopping there gives us that sound. This is like uh, the flamenco scale kind of. So uh, I'm gonna do that again without the talking through. Let's start over. So 
this is a whole other thing. Now, now that I did that and I can hear it and I focused in on it and it got me to know where the roots are all throughout the scale and not just the low root, now you can really improvise with it. So that's Phrygian mode. Okay, let's do the fourth mode. Okay, off of F in this case. Um, this is gonna be almost like you're playing a major scale off this note, but it's gonna have a sharp four instead, which is gonna make it be that same physical scale shape that we just that we've been playing. One, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, back down. Okay, whoa, super weird sounding mode. Kind of unsettling. Okay. Interesting. Just moving that four over to be sharp. It's otherwise a major scale, but it has a sharp four. Really leaves it hanging in a weird place. It really makes it, um, not necessarily unstable, but like unsettling almost in a way. Like it doesn't ground us. That four note really turns out to be quite important in a, in a major key tonic sound um, because even it's not in the major chord, but it uh, is used as kind of a tension note that pulls towards the three of the chord. So without that, it's kind of floating. This is very common in, in uh, movie soundtracks, the Lydian mode, this fourth mode. Okay, but again. Okay, I'm gonna improvise with it a little bit. If we were in the key of C, and then you went to the four chord of F, like in a song, um, the, and you thought of it as pl playing around on it, you played that root, and you went, it would sound so appropriate. You're playing one, uh, and then three, and then five, but with that note, that needs to be there for the Lydian mode. So I definitely utilize this kind of thinking on you know chord by chord basis in songs like oh went to that four chord f is now my root the four is now the root the mode is lydian i'm going to make sure that sharp four is there i'm not i personally am not thinking of the c scale at that point i'm thinking of the f lydian scale at that point um and i can't imagine doing it I mean, it'd be really hard i think if i thought of it as the c scale i would just focus on c and it wouldn't get that sound for me okay let's move on we're gonna do mixolydian scale this is the fifth mode it's going to be off the five so this is off g in this case one two three four five six flat seven one okay so it's just like a major scale with a flat seven one two three four five four three two one one flat seven six five four three two one one flat seven six five four three turn around those rules are so important the root to root rules It's just a little different than that major scale. Instead of that's major with that flat seven, okay? So I said just uh, when I was talking about Lydia and how I think chord by chord like this to really get into it, to really kind of unlock those. This is how I've practiced it. And so with something more complex, if you if you were trying to get some crazy uh, melodic minor mode, like the altered scale, which is the seventh mode of melodic minor, and it's used on uh, really dissonant chords or chords that need to resolve often in jazz music, or it's just a super cool chord to use over a dominant seventh chord, and it's called the altered scale often. Um, and it's the seventh mode of melodic minor. If you if you wanted to unlock that, all you got to do is this, right? So you got to see that physical shape first, of course, uh, just the physical shape of whatever scale your uh, the parent scale is that things are coming from, and then just do this like crazy. Do this until it just you're seeing it, you're hearing it, you're seeing all those roots. You get it. Play around with with uh, targeting back on the root, right? So if I did this on this uh, mixolydian. G mix 
Lydian. Okay, let's do the sixth mode. This is Aeolian mode. This is the sixth mode. It's also the natural minor scale. So handy. I mean, this is one of the reasons why just understanding modes in the first place is, is right off the bat really important. Uh, the natural minor scale is just the sixth mode of the major scale. So if you're just even just doing this off major scale and then natural minor scale, if that's all you needed to do, if that's all you were working on right now, this exact exercise will really distinguish the two. It will finally distinguish the two because I know it's like, what do you mean they're the same scale, the same notes, but different scale, right? What do you mean there's the, the minor and, and the major? Well, the root it changes and we want to treat the root as the root. So. Here's that sixth note, one, two, flat, three, four, five, flat, six, flat, seven, one, pause, repeat that note, keep going, one, two, flat, three, four, flat, three, two, one, flat, seven, flat, six, five, four, flat, three, two, one, I know that's a mouthful to say all that. I love it when there's that many notes below, but there's not the root, the root would be down here. Of course you could go down there but in this position i really like that according to the rules you can't pause anywhere until you get back to the root and that's why it sounds like the proper scale ah yes sounds like the natural minor scale sounds so much like the natural minor scale So if you're playing over an A minor chord, just like in a natural minor minor key, and you could play your scale form and, and treat it that way. That's so different than how I would play over just thinking of it as C major. Okay, let's do the next one. Last mode, Locrian. This is the seventh mode, and it you could use it if you were thinking of playing over a half diminished chord. Um, it's a great mode for that, but in any case, just as far as the mode goes, it's off the seven. Here we go. Actually, that lowest note here can be our seven. One, two, one, flat two, flat three, four, flat five, flat six, flat seven, one, lots of flats. Okay, I don't need to say it more. Sounds very similar to Phrygian, but it actually has another extra flat uh, going on with it. It has a flat five. So of course I'm improvising around with it a little bit now, but. So when, when you do this, um, one thing that's very strange, because you might think, oh, no big deal. My hands are used to that major scale form that I've been playing for a while, if you've been doing that. It, it Because of it being its own mode and us treating it that way, sometimes that familiarity will just go away. It will just be like, what? It, it feels really unique like its own scale and it should it really should feel like it's its own thing totally um, if you rely on thinking of it as that major scale that you were used to of course the physical shape is helpful to know that and, and to think of it as the overall kind of scale form but um, that becomes really fo the way we thought we knew it before it becomes foggy and we're, we're really solidifying it in a very new way because we're pausing on that rhythm. So that was the last mode in the major scale. So that's it, that's this whole exercise. Of course, you can do that with any of the five scale forms or any scale form, any way of playing scales. You could do it anywhere. You could do it along one string, but really with those uh, typical scale forms is where I find it super valuable, where I definitely recommend working on that. You could certainly kind of work through all of that you know, as an exercise and kind of map it out. But if you find yourself in any situation where uh, you're playing over a certain chord and you feel like, wow, it'd be helpful to really see the root on this and kind of play over the chord appropriately um, and not just think of that parent scale and maybe that's making you not target it as much, 
try this exercise just on a case by case basis to kind of map it out, get familiar with it. But of course, just to to unlock the modes in general and just kind of have them click a little better and kind of and, and really hear them and just play around with that. I I just do it on all the modes. I mean, even in even in just one scale form, even if you did it with the open C scale, it's then it's less about kind of mapping out the whole guitar that way and more about just kind of getting a sense of how that feels, how it sounds, how it works, um, kind of understanding, oh yeah, that makes sense. Locrian has flat two and flat five and, and all of that kind of getting it and seeing it and hearing it. I hope you found that helpful. Obviously, I, I just love this. I think it's I think it's really exciting. Even just kind of refreshing myself on it and then improvising with, with one of those is just really fun. I feel like that sound just starts to come out, get unlocked. So that's it for this lesson question for you. Is there a way that you've practiced modes or that you work on modes that helps you see them, understand them, unlock them, play with them? Uh, is it applicable for you to use them over chords? Uh, anything like that. Obviously there's more than one way to work on something and get a certain result. So if there's something you've been doing, I would absolutely love to hear about it. Hope to see you in another lesson in the future and happy practicing.